Hello, this is Quentin from ServiceNow. I'm here to talk again about Stream Connect for Apache Kafka, but this time it's to talk about a specific use case related to the CMDB and sending uh, CMDB kind of updates out of the ServiceNow instance to maybe feed the data lake um, or a database with those CMDB update and change that occurs on in your service now instance a lot of our customers are um, looking at solution or scalable solution to um, synchronize in real time what they have in the cmdb extract the data and feed data lakes and so um, they can um, do some kind of reporting using other um, uh, reporting tool and data source that they have outside of service now uh, we've covered in previous videos, I've covered in my uh, YouTube channel some videos that explain how we could create business rules to export um, CMDB updates uh, using Stream Connect for Apache Kafka. And I've covered um, the scenario where an insert or an update ha happen uh, in any of the CMDB class, how we could structure uh, your business rule, organize your business rule and so on to export um, uh, export the data uh, using uh, Apache Kafka uh, but we never really covered the scenario where uh, you, you retire a CI and you do some kind of soft delete of the CI or uh, retire the CI and you want to reflect that change uh, in your data lake and you want to do this in real time and send this over uh, Kafka so you, because ServiceNow has Stream Connect for Apache Kafka and we also have the CMDB so you can um, accomplish those uh, use cases. Um, we could do it with business rules but talking to my uh, co-worker, uh, one of my co-workers from our um, customer outcome team, um, um, the recommendation that he gave me uh, for specifically the when you retire a CI or delete a CI is to uh, do this within the framework of the CMDB data manager, which is part of our um, capabilities that provide governance and, and where you can configure policies uh, for a specific CMDB class, uh, where you can define uh, how the, the process should of retiring, retiring a CI should look like. So that's why I'm showing here and by any means I'm not an expert of our CMDB workspace and data manager, but I have a strong CMDB background. I was previously at ServiceNow, an IT operation management uh, solution consultant, so I've done a lot of uh, in the CMDB, but all those uh, shiny CMDB workspace is new to me, it's just my uh, little disclaimer. But I'm gonna go through uh, a policies so I can kind of explain the little uh, use case that I have uh, for you in that demo. So I'm in the CMDB uh, workspace on my brand new Washington demo instance. And here uh, uh, in the quick link, I have the data manager. This is where your CMDB um, manager can go and start putting governance around, you know, managing the, the life cycle of uh, CIs, how the CI should be retired, uh, tracked, and, you know, and, and, and uh, how the, wh who needs to approve when you need to retire certain CI and so on. So we have the concept of policies. So I went and created a new policy uh, just to, to save some time and make that videos, video a bit shorter. I already created the policy. So I've defined, a po uh, I created a policy in Data Manager sp to focus specifically on the CMDB Linux server CI. So that I've named it like this. I'm gonna click on view policy and go over all the settings. I kept it very simple. Just, I just want to explain plan the plumbing. And if I know in, in, a, in the real world, uh, you're gon gonna have more complexity. So I've put the name of my data, CMDB data manager policy and uh, there is different policy type. Uh, you can define it, it's, it's a policy to retire the CI or to delete the CI and things like that just out of the box feature. So I selected retire, just wanted to test it, this use case. And then here in the data filter, this is where you define uh, for what CI this policy should apply. And you can put some advanced condition and talking to my colleague, um, Brandon from the customer outcome team, he was saying one of the typical um, criteria you know to retire some CI is to look at one of one of the condition is to look at the 
the most recent discovery, right? So here I've said, hey, I want to look at, um, I want to apply that policy on and retire CI only if they haven't been discovered in the last two months, for example. So you can add many criteria here. You can look at any CI field and put your advanced condition if you want. And here, when you click apply filter, it's just going to show what the, um, the match, the CI that match that condition, right? So you can test your filter just right there in the UI. Here, there's an assignment type. You can define um, who's going to be assigned to the, the, retire, the, the CI retire task. Who's going to gonna have to approve before we actually retire the CI or delete the CI? Here, I decided to use the field owned by. So for my test, I basically own the two CI. I'm on the field owned by. It's me, Quentin. So uh, when, when I trigger that policy, it, it, it should send me a task that I need to approve before triggering the workflow and decommission those CI. Here, yeah, the option, this is where the magic happened and the link happen with Stream Connect. By default, in that CMDB server, C, um, data manager uh, capability of ServiceNow, there is a bunch of workflows uh, specifically uh, for the retire process. And there is one out of the box that I just basically uh, duplicated in Flow Designer and renamed and I've added a step that's going to be producing a Kafka message. And, and that Kafka message will contain the information about the CI we are retiring so I can send over that change, that soft delete or that send that information to whatever data lake or whatever consume, Kafka consumer is going to read that information, right? That's my use case. When a CI gets retired, I want to trigger um, a flow that's going to produce a Kafka message into our Hermes Kafka cluster so I can have my, um, my, my internal or external system Get receiving receiving that update via Kafka in real time and then maybe clean up a database or clean up their data lake, uh, whatever um, is the location where they store those CMDB updates if they want to do that, um, that use case. So here I've selected the needs to review. This means um, I'm going to have to approve the um, retire task before um, the workflow gets executed. And the schedule it, um, is something your admin manage. It's a scheduled job. I will actually run in, run it manually. So you get to see, you get to see it in the demo. Uh, this is um, a scheduled job that run on a daily basis at a certain time. And it's gonna just um, look for the CI that match the condition and, and create automatically those uh, retire uh, tasks and assign them to me in that case. And then I've, here I've um, already published um, that policy, so it should be shown as uh, published policies in there. And now we can um, maybe before I I run that schedule job that typically normally run you don't do anything you just run on a daily basis and look at all the CIs that match the policy and trigger those uh, retire tasks in that process. Uh, here I'm going to go on the Linux CMDB server CI and just to show you. Uh, what we're dealing with right now. Um, so there is two uh, CI that uh, will match the condition and the reason why they match the condition is because I've kind of tweaked the most recent discovery so they should fall under the, the, the criteria that I've configured, the condition I've configured. And the goal is to create a, a retired task that I will approve and see how the workflow get automatically triggered when I approve it. So it's all part of that CMDB lifecycle management and framework. And then how a Kafka message, um, one Kafka message per update uh, will be uh, created automatically. So I'm looking at my mailbox and it looks like a task was already created. So hopefully I'll see if this works. Okay, uh, I got this email. And the task uh, is waiting for my approval. That's uh, the task created from the CMDB data manager based on the policy and the condition in my policy. I'm the only approver. I own the CI and I can click here to view the CMDB da data management task. I could reply and approve directly, but I want to show you kind of uh, in the instance, it's more fun. So I'm opening this on the instance.
And uh, here you, it shows the task, some detail about the task. Say, hey, it's a task to retire. Um, you can obviously tweak all the workflows associated to it. It just lists the, um, the CI that the system wants to retire based on the policy. So it's a very good way to uh, manage the life cycle, of, uh, life cycle of the CI and avoid having a bunch of CI that's not getting updated and just uh, here sitting in the CMDB. So it's good to clean up the CMDB. Yeah, because I'm an approver, I can go here and um, just uh, change that field. Obviously, I could do it directly from the email, but I decided I, I will show you like this. So I click on here, and as soon as I do this, you will um, there in underneath the cover in the background, uh, the workflow will kick in, and then um, also the uh, Kafka message in real time will be sent. Actually, I'm going to show you the Kafka message right now, because um, like two message. So the way I've designed the workflow is just send a sys ID of the CI to be decommissioned and the CI name. Plus you don't see it because I'm using the Apache Kafka script. We don't show the header, but in the header of the Kafka message, I'm showing the table name, um, the, the table class, um, part of the CMDB CI class and the action uh, in the header of the message, the action is um, a retire action. So if you use any Kafka connector, you can read the header and you know you're receiving an event to retire um, a CI from that class. Uh, here I'm just displaying the sys ID as the name of the CI, but I'm just gonna show you in a different view um, um, that the Kafka message was created. And then I will go and show you the workflows that, that got executed so you can understand um, how quickly I was able to modify um, the out-of-the-box workflow, the copy of the out-of-the-box uh, CMDB data manager workflow. Yeah, I'm going into the, the width of Hermes. Uh, we have a lot of videos that cover this and doc. This is just another way to show you the Kafka message that was uh, created a minute ago. So I'm just going to change the date and say inspect topic. And I j because th from that view, I can actually show you the header of the Kafka message. So you can see the actual, uh, all the detail of what, wa what was created from my flows as soon as I approved. The whole point of this is to show you that you can manage your CMDB and the life cycle of your CI the way you want to do it, but within the framework of our CMDB data manager and send over those change via Stream Connect for Apache Kafka in real time. So synchronize your change to an, uh, an external system still staying in, in, in leveraging the governance and the policy you have in place. If you start doing this via uh, just business rule, it may not be the, as uh, clean. So here I can show you the header and the payload of the message. That's why I'm using that view. So here it's a header, see action retire and the table name. And in the, the, app, the payload itself contain the CI ID and the CI name. I don't really need the name, but given that the, the remote system will have some sort of a unique identifier, um, hopefully it's going to be the sys ID of the CI, then, then you can perform an action of cleaning in your data lake, for example. So now you can see the, the, the full picture and what I'm trying to, to show here. I'm going to go in the workflow studio and show you the execution of that flow that already happened. Um, I'm going to refresh and uh, you should see, yeah, 804. So that's uh, the execution of that flow here. So that was according to the CMDB data management policy that I've created, that was what ex uh, executed automatically. This is default task that's part of the CMDB data manager capability. You just go and mark the CIs at retired in the CMDB. But when I, I have added those steps, I'm just basically looking up the CMDB record uh, associated to that particular task. So I have in the context of a list of CMDB uh, records, or CI, sorry. And then for each of them, I only, uh, I only have two. For each of them, uh, I'm using uh, steps that I've created uh, in Flow Designer, and I'm leveraging the Kafka producer step. And here you can see I'm passing, um, I'm passing a bunch of information that I get doing my lookup, right? And then this is out of the box since I didn't do any of this. It's just uh, some error handling. Uh, that was part of the out of the box flow in the CMDB data manager. If I open the flow, I want to show you the, 
the step that I've created. This step, it took me two minutes to create uh, because I, I leveraged the Kafka producer step in it. So if I open it, uh, you can see uh, how I've designed that little, uh, little step. Um, I decided, uh, why, because I'm going to be producing a message in, in a Kafka topic, uh, um, I created a bunch of inputs like the Kafka topic and I knew I'm going to, the information I'm going to send via Kafka is a CICCID, a table name, CINEB, and an action. So whoever is consuming that knows it's a retire action or delete or update action. And if I, you click here, you can see I'm, I'm leveraging uh, the information I get from my input. So that's what that flow, that step is what generated the Kafka message that I'm consuming in real time here in that um, uh, terminal uh, here. So I think I've covered almost all, but I want to show you the, yeah, the end result here. It's at the end of the day, you've seen the CMDB uh, data manager. Uh, and if I refresh, the list here, they are marked as retired. So it's just one way of managing the life cycle of the CI and managing, you know, the process of retiring the CI. But I wanted to show you how you can neatly leverage Stream Connect to capture that particular um, event and send it over to an external system. You could do this with a business rule, with a delete business rule, but you I don't think it would be a good idea. Um, it's probably better to, to stay in the context of those uh, data manager uh, process uh, that I was showing here. Um, so from a um, CMDB management perspective, uh, whoever is your CMDB admin, um, he can modify the policies and the condition and the workflow that you create that or you modify to send over to Stream Connect will be the same. It's transparent for them. So they stay in the, in the context of the CMDB framework. It's transparent for them. So I think it's way cleaner to do that way. So I just want to thank you, uh, my, my colleague uh, Brandon, to kind of coach me on the, on the data manager because I think it's, uh, um, it's probably the best way to tackle that use case. Um, it's leveraging the data manager.